Last week, Russian President Vladimir Putin enacted a draft to get more soldiers to fight in the Ukraine war. It is estimated that around 300,000 civilians will be drafted, priority going to those who have military experience. In other news, Hurricane Ian has made its way through Florida, resulting in at least 19 deaths, thousands without homes, and millions without power. Hurricane Ian is currently headed towards South Carolina. Following the lockdowns due to bomb threats, Northampton Public School officials have made plans for new lockdown training. Superintendent Pearson Campbell stated that there is a new crisis team to help review protocols for teachers and help better equip them. I'm Gavin Knight Richard, and thanks for watching. Y'all ready for this? The field hockey team has had a very promising start to their season, winning their first four matches with a combined score of 19-3, to with their only loss coming against Westfield, who have not been scored against all season. We spoke to field hockey players to hear what they blame their success on. I think there have been some positive effects of getting a second coach this season. Last year it was really hard with only one coach, coaching both the JV and the varsity team, and our new coach, Carrie, um, has definitely been really helpful to our JV team along with the varsity. She brings in a lot of knowledge about field hockey, especially defense, and it's definitely different to have a coach that knows how to coach defense. Just super helpful to our team. I think the effects of getting a new coach this season has really helped there be less stress, um, definitely for like our head coach and for the players and captains. And, and it's nice having like another person teaching us field hockey. I think my presence as a captain has positively affected our team because I try to motivate everyone on the field and make sure we're all in the mindset of wanting to win and wanting to get after every ball. And um, when it comes to practices, I again try to lead practices by making sure everyone stays on task and stays motivated and does what we need to do in order to keep winning. I think that I don't think there's a heavy presence of underclassmen. I think it's kind of like same ratios. I think though that the, they are all very new to field hockey itself. So that's been hard on our team. And so we've kind of all been learning things over again, which is good, but also makes the varsity level not always get to like a high point in our playing. I think since there's a lot of underclassmen, it definitely helps the team because they have a lot to a lot of years that they can work for to make it up to the varsity level and numbers are currently dropping for every sport and so making sure we have enough underclassmen to keep the program running in future years is definitely going to be helpful as we do have seven seniors leaving this year. So As we've been winning, the wins definitely help motivate us for our future games. Um, we started off the season really strong. Currently we're five and two. We have some big competitors coming up. We play Frontier this week, so we'll see how that game goes. But I think we know what our team can do, and we just want to make sure we play our game so we can continue winning. I think the role of captains is just you're kind of the bridge between the team and the coaches. Anything that the team brings to you, you should bring to the coaches. And also really just motivating our team. We have to be good role models, especially to the underclassmen, show what the varsity level is like, and then at the varsity level, encourage everyone and just bring us to our higher standard we can be. Thanks for watching, and tune in next week when we talk about the football team. Hello, I'm Tyler, and I'm Wed. John Sen McNally. And you're the captain of? The soccer team. <laughs> one of the three, one of the three. Uh, okay, now who are the other two? Uh, Captains? Uh, my friend Connor Stiles and my other friend Finn Norris. Um, today we're going to do uh, a, a quick game. Um, at the, um, I'm going to give uh, a description of a sport and then I'm going to give four possible answers. One of them is going to be a, a super, like, obviously not the answer, but it's going to be haha -ha funny. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, good. So, this sport is an amalgamation of W, uh, WWE style wrestling and sci-fi movies. Contestants dress up as um, in elaborate creature costumes and enter the cage with tiny scar uh, skyscrapers and uh, fight it out. The presidential debate. <laughs> All right. 
Kaiju Big Battle, Kaiju Wrestling, and Kaiju Big City Throwdown. Uh, well, all the other ones have been so simple, so I'm gonna go Kaiju Wrestling. Run. <laughs> this is impossible. <laughs> Kaiju Big Battle. All right. Question four. The participants tie their parents' uh, shot at the ankles so there is no escape route and drop two ferrets into the pants. The person that holds both of the, fer uh, the ferrets uh, wins. Okay. Ferrets, uh, ferrets in me trousers. All right. Ferrets, uh, ferret slacking. Ferret legging. The ferret strikes back. Ferret legging. I'm confident on this one. You got it right. Let's go. This is the last question. Okay. The sport that um, this sport is played with a ball made of a uh, ball made of a coconut that is soaked in gasoline for almost a week. And then they light it on fire. <laughs> then you right. play it barefoot. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about this one. Hot coconut. Uh, fireball soccer. Fire, uh, fireball coconut. Flaming kickball. As much as I want to go for fireball soccer, I'm going to go for flaming kickball. Okay, and let's say fireball soccer. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, well, yep, you only got one right. Yeah, one of five, 20%. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Get him next time. Well, uh, hopefully I'll see you next week and uh, have a good rest of your week. On November 8th, voters in Massachusetts will decide whether or not to amend the state constitution to impose an additional 4% tax on those that have an income of over $1 million annually. This money would be spent on public education, transportation, and the state's general fund. Fair Share Massachusetts is leading the Yes on One campaign to support the amendment. Those who vote to oppose this argue that question one would nearly double the income tax of small businesses, family farmers, homeowners, and retirees. To learn more about this issue, we talked to people on both sides of the argument to get their perspectives. The fair share amendment question one on the November ballot would create a 4% tax on the portion of a person's income that's above $1 million and it would generate $2 billion every single year in new state revenue that would be constitutionally dedicated to transportation and public education. So what that means is that communities all across Massachusetts would have more money for fixing our crumbling roads and bridges. We would have more money to invest in our public schools. The impact of this amendment would be that it would give more money to schools, um, to public education, higher education. It would um, put down the cost of the public education for higher education so that students wouldn't have to take such a burden on for debt. Um, it would also improve the public schools and the public schools really need it right now after COVID. Opponents say that it would hurt small businesses, but I don't think so. Um, I think that it, it can only help um, the community. Proponents will say that this money is going directly to transportation and education as if it'll be additional revenue, but it's at the discretion of the legislature. How it works here, the legislature is the one that determines how money is spent. So while this money, whatever it brings in, whatever this revenue brings in, is indeed earmarked for education and transportation, it could simply replace existing revenue. It doesn't have to be additional revenue. So the state could just write a blank check and spend it somewhere else. So right now, the risk is to small business owners and retirees that might sell a house. If you look at it, it's not the super wealthy, not always the super wealthy that are going to be impacted by this tax increase. What it will also mean, about 50% of the people that are going to be impacted by this tax, it's going to be one-time events. So the sale of that business, the sale of a house. And a lot of times that's eating into a, a person's nest egg or a business owner's retirement nest egg. And they planned to have that money for their retirement. You can vote by ballot on November 8th, 2022. Thanks for watching. 
This week we sat down in a special destination location to devour some perfectly tender steaks with heaping loads of buttered Roadhouse rolls from the one and only Texas Roadhouse. Texas Roadhouse is a newer chain with the first one opening in 1993. Although not around for long, it has certainly competed in the big leagues and made a name for itself. Stick around if you're hungry. Yeehaw! Uh, Welcome to Takeaways. Episode 1 2. Yeah, 1.5? Yes, I don't know. Uh, so today we got some of uh, uh, Texas Roadhouse finest steaks and a uh, blooming onion. And of course we got some rolls. Uh, oh, where are those guys? I got few, some applesauce, go some fries. So the presentation. I'm gonna give this a. Uh, solid 4. 4.5 four, yeah. maybe. It looks. Uh, nice. It's uh, pretty damn soggy. This big potato, um, I think uh, they dropped like the salt on. Not terrible. Not terrible at all. Alright. Um, that's honestly pretty good. It, it is pretty good. It's a little cold, but that's only because we Should we stop all the plane coming? No. So there's a plane coming currently? It's so sick. It's so sick. Anyway. So that's pretty cool. Back if you couldn't the tell, we're, th we're at the airport. It's not in the shot. That's fine, whatever. Right. You can hear it, dude. Alright, back to the meal. Um, it's actually not bad at steak. Oh. For I'll to go steak, you know, it's a little cold, but it's honestly, it's got some pink. It's pretty nicely cooked. It's pretty tender. Yep. And buttery smooth. So what are you gonna, what are you gonna give the steak? For to go steak, I seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yeah. Um. Pretty damn good. But I'll give it a. I'll, I'll honestly give it a seven. Seven and a half. It's, yeah. it's very good. It's just cold. That's the only thing. It's really cold. I'm but gonna try some fries though. What can we expect? Yeah. I mean, we let it sit. Mm -hmm. Cold. Very soggy. Mm -hmm. Not crispy. But there's steak fries. Steak fries are always decent. Okay. That happens. Um. Ah. Mm. It doesn't go down easy, I'm telling you. No, I know at all. Well, Got I'm gonna some. tell you, these fries are terrible. What are you rating them? I'll give up four and a half, five. I'll give it a five. I mean, they have flavor. Uh, the fries are a 3 out of 10. How do you mess up fries? I hope you enjoyed this week's delicious assortment of meat and potatoes. Come back next week for more delicious content and DM at NHS Technology if you have anywhere you'd like us to review. This year, NHS has a new choir teacher, Miss Dillard, who has taken over for Bo Flathive, a long beloved teacher at Northampton High. Miss Dillard runs the chorus, the Northamptons, and will be the musical director for this year's musical, Rock of Ages. This week, we talked to Miss Dillard and students returning to chorus and the Northamptons. I am in the a cappella skills class with Miss Dillard. I think that Miss Dillard's teaching style is really fun. She's very engaging in class and cares about her students. I think that if Tones is after school, it will obviously be different from past years because it's not every day you won't have as much as a connection with everyone, but I think that it's definitely better than no Tones at all. This year is very different than last year, uh, just the fact that the group hasn't been formed yet, and um, we have a class that's focusing around a cappella, which is basically a cappella skills and learning more about a cappella as a genre of music. Susan's style does differ a little bit from Bo's. Um, it, at least in the class so far, we haven't had tones yet, but in the class so far, it's focusing more on actual technique and uh, building uh, vocal strength and parts and warming up and learning how to treat our voice as well and just learning about different parts. It seems different than what it was last year, but not in a bad way. This semester I'm teaching a cappella techniques, period one. Period two, I run capstone for seniors. 
period three, I teach chorus and yeah, that's, that's it. And then I'll be running Northamptons after school. Typically the class happens every day and we get a little more hands-on time, but, um, now that it's after school, two, di two days a week, it'll be a little more space between each rehearsal, so everyone's gonna have to really stay on their own practice. This year, I'm hoping to bring some energy and to get to know the students um, and the personality of the school in general, so I'm kind of staying as open-minded as I can about each ensemble, because each one has its own personality, and I wanna get to know them, so, um, just a renewed energy in doing some fun harmonies and some fun songs. And in the meantime, just trying to help everybody find their own voice. Thanks for watching and continue to look out for shows from the chorus, the Northamptons, and stay tuned for when we cover this year's musical, Rock of Ages. This Saturday, we went to Florence Night Out and saw performances from local artists, dance studios, and our very own band. There was also a plethora of local businesses and many food options, including Caravan Kitchen Food Truck and Holyoke Hummus. We spoke to local businesses, performers, and residents of the Florence area as well. The community classroom is a tutoring center that helps kids find their joy in learning again. Um, we're pre-K through 12th grade and actually work with adults as well. Florence Night Out is really a chance for our students and our teachers to get out in the community and be a part of the community. We also like to spread the joy of learning. I would like to see more students and student volunteers out next year for Florence Night Out. Maybe some more student booths. I'm on the Meridian team at Ascendance Inner World Arts. So this is my first time performing at Florence and Night Out, and I love the energy, and everyone's super nice, and yeah. It gives us a name, um, you know, it helps give us experience. Me, he definitely needs the experience. Um, it helps us make money and more uh, known to the community because it's very small. Um, definitely helps the business a lot with money, obviously, and experience. It's a freestanding birth center. We offer prenatal care, normal uh, GYN care, and we um, attend births in the back of the birth center. Uh, the Florence Night uh, Out affects our business in that we get to meet all our babies and our families again, and we get to introduce ourselves to the community. Uh, the impact of Florence Night Out is to get people out, walking around, seeing each other, seeing the businesses in town. I am very glad the Florence Night Out has returned. I think it enhances the community by bringing people together, um, making it safe for families, supporting artists and restaurants and commerce, and um, being positive for Western Mass. Next year I'd like to see more events for kids. I'm a dad. There's some stuff to do, but I don't feel like there's a ton. This is cute. Um, I don't know if you'll show that, but um, more interactive installations. All right, what's your favorite part of Florence Night Out? I think the uh, caravan kitchen food truck for me because I got some friends been waiting 40 minutes at Friendly's, maybe the worst restaurant in Florence uh -huh. when you could just come here, practically no line. Oh yeah, I could just order right up. What are you guys doing here tonight? Um, I am just coming out to have some fun because why not? Yeah. I kind of had nothing else to do and it's nice out today. A little bit chilly but it's nice and I got some food so we're all good. Who most want to see next year in Florence Night Out? More dessert options. I mean, you've got Florence Soft Serve, Friendlies. But more? more dessert, yeah. Um, I agree with that. More dessert. Next year, check out Florence Night Out. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.